isn't perspective a wonderful thing? Sometimes we think, man, we've got it all figured out. We've got everything in the, in the right frame. And it's just how we look at perspective of things, isn't it? You know, today, and, and I love the, the season of, of thanksgiving we're coming into when we look back and if we keep the right perspective on things, Thanksgiving is a wonderful time of year. I mean, as a country, we are blessed more than we'll ever know. If you ever go outside of anywhere in the United States, you will really see as a country how we are blessed, and we should be thankful for that. But not only that, as Christians, man, we should get up every morning and be thanking God for what He has done in our lives. Perspective. Huge. Massive. And as I was thinking about, God, what do we talk about when it comes to thankfulness? How do we, what are we thankful for? Are we right? God, are we doing the right things? Are we thankful for the right things? And I got to looking at a passage of text. And this text is in Luke 17. And it's really a story about being thankful. If you look at this passage of Scripture... When you, when you look at it, sometimes people think it's about other things. Sometimes people think it's about only healing, but it's not. You've got to understand where these people were at when it comes to this passage of Scripture. Leprosy in, the, in this culture was a terrible, terrible disease. It was contagious. It was infectious. There were strict rules if you had gotten leprosy on what you could and couldn't do. You had, to be, you had to live outside of the camp. You couldn't be in common union with people around you. All you could do was be alone. The priests were the only ones of the day that could, that could say that you were clean. And the only way you could go back to your family was if the priest had declared you free of the disease. Sometimes people got this disease of leprosy because they had disobeyed God. Miriam, the sister of Moses, got leprosy when she and Aaron, her brother, said that God should be speaking through them as he did through Moses. There's also a rebellious king. When you read in the Bible, Uzziah, who had contracted leprosy, at the beginning of his reign, this, this king was fantastic. But he did something that was outside of the God's will. He went in and started burning incense in the temple. And only a priest could do that. And he, he contracted leprosy for the rest of his life. He had to live in a separate house. But this story right here starts here in Luke 17, 11. It says, as Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem... He reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. As he entered a village there, ten lepers stood at a distance. That's an important part. How many lepers were there? There were ten. Go on. Crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he looked at them and said, Go show yourselves to the priests. Now look at this line. It says, and as they went, they were cleansed of leprosy. That's an important line too. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Father God, as we dive into your passage of Scripture this morning, God, we just ask that you would just fill this place with your presence. God, open our minds and our hearts for what you want us to know. Let all the distractions just be moved away, God. And help us be thankful. 
what you have given us, God. Story is about ten men that had leprosy. When you had leprosy, you had to walk around all of your life as long as you were infected, yelling, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. Now, how would how terrible would that be? That, you know, if you got sick or you had something going on in your body, you had to yell out so everybody knew it. Wouldn't that be awful? Some people should be doing it. I've got the flu. Stay away from me. No. You know. But these men called out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They knew Jesus had healed others. And Jesus told them to do this. He said, go and show yourselves before the priest. Now here's the deal. The skin became clean and free. Can you imagine the joy they felt that as they, as they were leaving, they looked down and their skin was healed? Can you imagine what joy they felt? Can you imagine how they, they were like, Thank you. But only one of them turned back to give thanks to God. This man was a Samaritan. Samaritans hated Jewish people. Ten were healed, but only one came back. The one that nobody would have thought about. Nobody would have thought the Samaritan would have come back. It's different. Jesus met up with a band of ten lepers. But a common misfortune had broken down some barriers in, this, in, this, in these ten guys' lives. See, you had a racial barrier going on. You had a nationality barrier going on. But they all had a common problem. And the thing is, is when you have a common problem, tragedy, people forget the things like race or nationality. Surely one of them had remembered Surely they didn't forget what had drawn them together. You had these Jews and Samaritans living together because they had a common issue. We don't know how long they'd been together. We don't know how long they had leprosy. They were isolated from society and they were not permitted to come back until they were completely healed. And you know these men waited for some time for someone to come and cure them. They needed a healing. They had hoped that this Jesus they had heard about, that this Jesus that was spreading through the gospel could heal them. That's why they cried out, if you're truly the, the master, God, heal us. The master means commander-in-chief. They knew Jesus was totally in command, even with disease and death. And they were right. Jesus is always the person to cry out to. We may not have leprosy today, but we still have a need for Jesus. We need Jesus to save us from our sin. We need him to help us even when we're not in sin. We need Jesus to help us when our, with our problems, and we need Him to show mercy on us when we're sick and when we're hurting, when we're sad, when we're lonely. And we also need Jesus when we're happy. He is the master of everything. See, these men were distant from others for the fear that leprosy was contagious. There's many of us here today that want to set ourselves apart from everyone in society, sometimes even from our own families. And
And sometimes we don't even know the need that we have for our commander-in-chief until things go bad in our life. These men had been at a distance for everyone so long, and they were in so need of somebody to come to them and heal them and bring them back into a relationship with their families and their friends. This was an impossible need. There was no cure for leprosy. This was an impossibility. But Jesus is above all impossibilities. There is hope with Jesus. Here's the question today. What's your impossible need? What is it that you can't fix by yourself? We all have things in our life we can't fix. We all got things that are outside our control. Let me tell you, you're not in control of anything. God is in control of all. I promise you. Jesus saw him. How wonderful is it to be seen by Jesus? He always sees us. He notices what we're doing. He's intimately acquainted with us. He knows our needs. When we cry out, He will hear us. And He will answer according to His perfect loving will. In our passage, Jesus told these guys, He says, go show yourselves to to the priest." But only people that were healed were supposed to go to the priest. But isn't this the craziest thing in the world that when Jesus spoke to them, they all turned and went that way. They all followed his orders. And it was only after they did what Jesus said that the miracle happened. They could have looked down at their skin and said, well, you know, Jesus, I can't go show myself to the the priest yet because I'm not healed. But it was on their way to the priest that the miracle happened. A great passage of Scripture. It's great because here is the thing. If you want to see miracles in your life, do what Jesus says. Even when it sounds crazy. Even when everybody else says, well, that's foolish. Because if somebody had been standing there with the lepers looking at them going, Go show yourself to the priest. You're not clean yet. You're not healed. But on their way to being to the priest, they were healed. They had to do what Jesus said first. And often, I believe this, that when we cry out for Jesus' help, he answers us. But a lot of times when we hear what that answer is, we go, that is nuts. Are you... Okay, was that last night's pizza? Or... Is that that the Holy Spirit? And the only way you know that is to spend time with God. That's how you learn His voice. Jesus always answers. The miracles come when you do what Jesus said. But the amazing part of this passage of Scripture was the one that came back. And how many of us are are like the other nine? This Samaritan, Samaritans did not get along with Jews. They wouldn't talk to them. Actually, Jews thought Samaritans were dogs. They were were the racial outcast. They were from a different nationality. They were from, you know, different breeds. I mean, it was just crazy, the racial barriers that had happened between these two groups of people. And yet... While the other nine were Jewish and had gotten healed, the Samaritan was the one that came back. He was the thankful for, thankful one. He was the one that saw the miracle happen and fell at the feet of Jesus and said, Thank you, God, for what you have done. And this man received a double blessing. 
Not only was he healed of the skin disease, but he was also made right with God. How many times do we ask God for something? How many times do we get into to, to something in our life and we ask God and then God answers that, that prayer? God, God does that. Do we make that extra effort to return to Jesus and just thank Him for what He has done? The others, those nine, they were healed of their physical ailments. But the, the Samaritan was not only healed of the physical, he was healed spiritually. See, most of us walk around and we only think about our physical life. Hey, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear. But God teaches us that's not enough. Don't worry about those things in life. God will provide for all of that. He knows what your needs are. Think of the spiritual aspect of that. It's much, much more impossible. That's much, much more exciting. It's long lasting. See, the thing that Jesus wants to know, he wants, you, he wants you to get into a relationship where you can know Him better. He wants to double bless you. Thank you is not a hard thing to say, but it says a lot. It acknowledges the thoughts and acts someone has given on our behalf. Thank you is a very important, beautiful thing to say, especially to Jesus. Jesus gives us everything we've got. He gives us the air we breathe. He gives us the new day. He gives us the sunshine. He gives us the heat. He gives us the cool. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, we should be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. I didn't say that we should be thankful just in the circumstances that we like, does it? It says we should be thankful in all circumstances. You know why? Because God has a plan for your life. It's a plan to make you prosperous. It's not a plan to harm you. Sometimes during the middle of that plan, God wants us to grow. He wants us to be more like Him. And in order to do that, He's got to prune us. He's got to shape us. He's got to mold us into the way he, we need to be. And sometimes that's difficult. But we should be thankful in all circumstances. Boy, that's tough, isn't it? It's hard. Heard about this little boy. And he... This little boy wanted $100 so bad. He started, he started praying every day. How many of y'all ever had something that you wanted really bad and you prayed every day? Come on. Am I the only one? I mean, you prayed for it every day. This little boy wanted $100 and he prayed for it every day. And this, he decided, I'm going to write a letter. And he wrote a letter and he put to God, USA. The post office thought it'd be funny if they sent it to the president. He sent this letter to the president, and he read the letter from the little boy, and he thought, well, you know, man, what a sweet kid. I'm going to send him $5. So he wrote him a letter back, and he, he gave him five, and he, he, he put $5 in the envelope. He sent it back to him. The little boy got the $5, and he was overwhelmed wow, I've got, I got $5 back, and he wrote another letter to God, USA. The post office forwarded it back to the president. And the letter said this. It says, Dear God, thank you very much for sending me the money. However, I noticed for, that for some reason you sent it through Washington, D.C., and those guys decided to tax me $95. Isn't that the way of life? Now, here's the thing. God doesn't 
He doesn't give us less than we need or we deserve. I mean, we don't deserve anything. God gives us way more than we could ever deserve. But he never can give us less or he doesn't hold back from us. He doesn't tax us. Matter of fact, God gives us an abundant supply for our needs. The Bible tells us that he'll give you more than you ever ask or, th or think that's possible. And I believe that. I see that happening every day in our life. And sometimes it's just a matter of perspective of looking how God does it. In this passage of Scripture, I believe it does show us that Jesus does notice when we're not thankful, though. He asked the leper, he said, didn't I heal nine? Didn't I heal ten? Why are you the only one? I think it also shows us that he waits for us to be thankful. And I think he waits for us just like he did the lepers to come back. But not just so we can say thankful, but so that he can shower blessings upon us. He provides us help every day. Every day, God does something in your life. I guarantee you, if you'll stop and think, what has God done for me this morning? Well, you got up, didn't you? What a blessing. Did we thank Him like the Samaritan did? Or are we like the nine that went away not even thinking about what God has done for us? Jesus loves a thankful heart. The question is, is, are we thankful, are we grateful for what Jesus has done? Sometimes we go along like the nine lepers, so excited with our answered prayer and our blessings that God has done that we forget to go back to say thank you. We get so self-centered that we forget to thank God and we, get, we forget to thank, thank people. The only way we can do better at that is practice saying thank you to God. I believe every prayer should be ended with thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It takes training. We should be thankful in all circumstances. We should be thankful when it looks like in our lives that nothing is working out because I promise you, if you trust God, He's got a plan. Stay the course. And you've got to obey God before you see the miracles. You've got to be willing to go to, the, go to the priest before you see the actual healing happening. When Jesus tells you to go, you've got to do it. He loves a thankful heart. Psalms 107.8 says, Let them praise the Lord for His great love and for the wonderful things He has done for them. The Lord deserves and waits for your thankful, for, for you saying thank you. It's a little thing, but it's a very important thing. See, when we say thank you to God, we're recognizing that He is God of all and that He, he gives us all. And He wants us to have a thankful heart. Every day He blesses us. And He answers our prayers. We get busy and we forget it. But we should always be willing to go back and say thank you. The other thing is, is recognizing the greatest gift that God ever gave. Just like the leper when he came back, Salvation is the greatest gift that God ever gives you. And if he never did anything past that, we should get up every morning and say, thank you, God. How many of you like to get gifts? Some of y'all don't like to get gifts? I remember that on Christmas. Hallelujah. So we like to get gifts. And how, when we get a gift, do we get excited and we start saying, 
man, thank you. Should, we should do that, right? And, and how, how when, we, when we receive a gift, do we want to show it off to everybody? Do we want to do that? I mean, you get excited about gifts. I got a gift this morning. Check this out. I'm going to show it off to the whole congregation. Check that out. Andy and Karen brought me this, this pastor shirt. I love it. I may wear it every weekend. Hallelujah. But when we get a gift like this, I mean, we want people to know because we are thankful that somebody thought so much about it. We want to tell everybody about this, right? When we get a gift that's special to us. But isn't that the way it should be with our salvation? That we should be so thankful that we can't come into contact with anybody without telling them what God has done in our life and thanking God every morning for the blessings that he's bestowed upon us. We don't even mention Jesus Christ. And they may be the very one that needs to hear the message. We don't know. Be thankful for the gift that God has given you. Be thankful and be excited. Be willing to share it with God, with everybody, about how good God has been in your life. You should be so thankful, so overwhelmed with the blessings that He does in you that you can't help but share those. I'm sure when the leper, when, when the Samaritan, when he got back, I'm sure he was preaching about Jesus to everybody he came into contact with. Why wouldn't you? You were dead. His leprosy was a death sentence. He was dead, and now he's alive. Same with salvation. You were dead, and now you've got eternity. Share that with everybody. You come into contact. Be excited about what God has done in your life. Be thankful. Tell Jesus every day how thankful you are for what he has done in your life. Amen? Bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here this morning and you're thinking, you know, I have not been as thankful as I should have been. But God, from this point forward, help me be better. Is there anybody in here that wants that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Also, if you're in here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you've walked away with that relationship and you want to make that right, Today is the day. Is there anybody in here that says, you know what, my relationship's just not right. I want to make that right. I want that gift. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. See, I, I believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus can change our hearts to make us more thankful. Because what he will do is make us be in more of a relationship with him. And, and the closer we get to him, the more thankful we'll be. And this morning, I want to pray for you guys. I want to pray blessings upon you. And I just asked with each and every one us to stand in agreement that as we go through this month, that every day we're going we're gonna to be thankful for the gift that Jesus Christ has given us. We're going to say thank you to Jesus every day, and we're also going to tell somebody about what Jesus has done in our life. We're going to be thankful for that. And Father God, I just ask that you would just bestow on these people this morning, me included, God, give us a thankful heart. God, just... Break our hearts for what breaks yours. But help us each and every day to tell you thank you, God. Help us just realize the magnitude of how much your love is on our life. God, show us the mercies and grace that, you, that you've already given us. God, help us see the wonderful gifts that you give us every day. And God, I ask that as, as this group of body of believers, as we leave here, God, that we're so on fire about you and your love, God, that we can't help share the free gift that you've given us each and every day. God, we love you. We praise you. God, help us be thankful. Help us be thankful in all circumstances. 
God, we love you. We praise you. We give you all honor and we give you all glory. And everybody said, Amen.